when Freddie Gray was assaulted and killed in Baltimore. It was devastating. The ubiquity of those images of him was very hard. It felt like unfinished business to me, and I couldn't get what happened to him out of my head. I'm a portrait painter by trade. I, I didn't think I could make a portrait of Freddie Gray that was any more noble or any more wonderful than he probably was as a person to his family, right? I couldn't compete with the reality of him. And it also didn't make sense to make a noble portrait of him because nothing noble happened to him. He was murdered. He was attacked and killed. And that got me thinking about how I would talk about the loss of a person rather than talking about making an image of a person. We started thinking about the facade and then I, I couldn't stop thinking about you know, just the words, Freddie Gray. And I asked myself, what color would that be? If I could make a color called Freddie Gray, what would it be? So I started looking at images of Mr. Gray on the internet, and I selected three photographs. One is that photograph of him on a street corner in his neighborhood, I'm guessing, and he's wearing this bright red shirt, and he's looking directly at the camera. And then the second image is him being arrested by the Baltimore Police Department. And then the third image is him in the hospital on life support. So I took those three images and I used photo uh, software and I averaged the color in all of them to get three monochrome colors. And so those became three different Freddie Grays. Those were the three colors. And you think about them as a timeline of his life and the color that is at the top of the timeline is him at his most vibrant and most present. And then as the timeline continues, it becomes less, uh, less so. I believe that all art has political content. And so I wanted to make a work that actually married the formal language of modernism and minimalism to the experience of being alive in America right now. So now maybe when we look back at other modernist or minimalist works, we can start to wonder, well, I wonder what was happening in the world at the time that this was made. So we can start to connect the visual world with the, the lived experience of the world. It's about something that affects all of us in the city of Boston and all of us in the country. And it's facing a neighborhood of mostly black and brown people who are under assault by different parts of our own government. I think it's an affirmation that the museum cares about those things and it, it can be like a beacon to come to this place. Like Mrs. Gardner herself, you know, their arms open towards the people of the city to welcome them into this museum that she built. So I'm, I'm really glad that uh, my facade is continuing that outward sort of gesture to welcome people into the space not just to talk about the art of the past, but to talk about now, to talk about right now.